how to make rock bases for your miniatures. Hi there, Chris from Good Enough Scenery here, and I recently painted the three hunters and put them on these bases. When I shared them on social media, loads of people were asking how I made the bases. So what did I do? I made a whole bunch more bases for you. And then I filmed a tutorial on exactly how I made them. So that's what today's video is all about. Let's get into it. So these bases consist of basically four things. They consist of a base, they consist of some foam, they consist of some paint and some flock and things to just finish them off. But in terms of how they're made, it's incredibly simple. So let's start with a, a little one like this. And the great thing is you can use slot bases because the whole base is gonna get covered anyway. So this is some 20 mil XPS foam. And all I'm gonna do is, I'll put a link in the description for what I use. I buy it in big sheets, you can buy smaller ones. Um, now to start with, it's gonna take your base and just press it into the foam like that, just so you've got a, a, a rough marker. And then from there, it's gonna snap that off like that, so you know that that's easily big enough. Now from here, we're just gonna cut into this a little bit randomly, and we're gonna keep checking back to make sure we're not taking too much off. Um, so let's flatten this out a little bit here, cut down at an angle here, something like that. And that's looking okay, as I think at the moment. But we're gonna add a little more, a bit more detail. So I'm gonna move to my smaller knife, and from here, I'll bring you in closer for this. From here, I'm gonna draw some lines, score some lines with this knife here like this. Gonna follow these round. So not pressing hard, not going in deep, but just pressing some lines in. And from here, we can do a bunch of different things. So to begin with, we could cut, undercut here to join up with this line. Just pull that off so that there's a, a, a bit of an overhang like that. But alternatively, you can cut down some and you can carry on where the lines would have been here. Blade needs changing. I think another undercut in here like this. Maybe just take the corner off there. So the more detail and lines and bits you can pull off, the better this is going to end up looking. So end up with something that looks like that. And you can then take tin foil and just add a bit more texture to it by rolling that across, but you don't have to do that. So that's gonna fit nicely on there, like that. Do another one for you. Try to make this one a bit more interesting. So that size like that. So we can make this one quite a bit taller maybe. So let's cut in like that to begin with. And then cut down to join it, and here, I think some horizontal cuts make it look really good. So it's going to cut up just a tiny sliver there, like that. And cut this angle off here, like that. And then some angle cuts in here too. And I think maybe a big overhang, something like that. Coming down to meet those lines there. And another layer here, so just cutting horizontally. And then gently just sawing action, get that to join up there. I think maybe flatten out at the top here. So when I'm sawing here, I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm just letting the sharpness of the blade just do all of the work. There's no danger to my beautiful fingers. And this feels a little bit too squared off. So that's, and I think just a bit of a roll there, just to, and then that, I don't like how pointy that is. So a bit more height on this one. And I think we'll put a little ridge into this. So angling it up, letting the blade do all of the work and then cutting that out there like that. Maybe another couple of ridge lines here. Just cut a little bit out here. I feel that's a little more interesting. You can cut out little pieces like that as well. I think we'll basically call that done now. Those two smaller ones, let's go for a bigger one. This was 50 mil XBS foam, so we can use foam that's as big as that. So that's a huge one there, far too big, but I think as a something which would be a model for a hero model, that'd be pretty good. So we don't need all of that height, so let's gently saw through. That can be definitely even used for another one. Don't need it to be that long now. Quite like the idea of maybe having got a sharpie model that could be running up a slope or running down a slope. So let's do some lines like this. Take our small blade. I'm going to up at an angle and that turn into a really big overhang like that. Might even make it bigger. 
looks interesting. And then just a couple of changes in the movies. They have a nice big stone base like that. So, just carving into them like that. And next up, we're going to glue these to the bases. Now, if you want to test your foam, now I've done a few of these already as you've seen. I have found that it is okay to use super glue, but you need to be using it in a certain way. I think if you, with this foam, if you just chuck loads of super glue on it, it will just melt. So what I'm going to do is place a little bit there. Now, I take the base and just move it around like that on it. So we're spreading all of the super glue around, and then we're just going to leave it. And in not very long, that will glue to it nicely. Exactly the same thing here. And I'm not using our fingers or anything else, just literally the same thing here. And there's a bit of horse leg because this is an old base. So we'll see if that will pop off. And, and then do a tiny, tiny bit. done but we can make them look even better than that once they're dry. So your rock doesn't have to cover the entire base so here I've just taken one made this rock and exactly the same sort of thing but I've only made it half the size of the base there and we can fill in some rest of the stuff there. And uh, you can also do this with broken bases. So I've got one here, and if you're short on bases, which I'm not, but if you're short on bases and you've only got some broken ones, then this isn't the end of the world here. So I've created this rock thing here. That's not a, a hugely detailed one, but it's you know it's certainly good enough. Another thing you can do is you can create little just cuts down into it, just because it doesn't doesn't all have to be rigid. So I might make that ever so slightly deeper. It all just adds a level of interest to it. Now from here, I'm doing exactly the same sort of thing, but I'm going to put the glue onto here and then spread it around. Then I'm going to hold the base in position as the glue dries. And then you've got a base which was completely useless. Um, and it's now been turned into one which is less useless. So just hold it for a couple of seconds and there we go. We have a base which has been restored. So we've got these six so far. Another option is to take the foam and stick it on first of all, which is what I have done here, and then shape it accordingly. Now, one technique I haven't shown you in terms of making it look rocky is just to do loads and loads of lines. So previously I've done like three or four on a side and then just kind of carve something out. What you can do is just do another line, kind of roughly aiming to be somewhere new each time, but changing the angle ever so slightly and just cutting in like that, essentially seeing what happens. So I'm moving around to here now, down to this side. Then you can use the point of your knife here. You can see, I mean, you could arguably just leave it like that. Uh, you can use the point of your knife just to scrape at it, not putting any pressure, really, just gently scraping and just seeing what gets pulled out. Sometimes you might see a bit like that bit there, you very deliberately go for that bit, but sometimes you're just pulling at it. And what I might do is just create one level or one little ridge there like that, and then just roll it, and then hope that detail will come up when we paint it in just a bit. So that's what we'll get on to next. We'll get on to the painting, and all of these will have some sort of stony, rocky-type existence on them. And all our different bases of shapes and sizes, and next up we are going to paint them. Now this is a very simple process, so I'm going to put a bit of black in, a lot more white in, and we're going to mix that up to unsurprisingly form grey. So that is almost exactly the colour I was aiming for, so that's good. You might notice how it's exactly the same as the colour of the rocks, but that's absolutely fine. So all I'm going to do is drop it. All we'll do is just get that painted far too much on the brush. Paint that, leave it to dry. Exactly the same with the bigger ones. Now with this type of foam, with it being a black foam as well, it can be the case that the colour gets sucked out of it a bit, so it may come out darker than it appears right now. But this is... I'm going to paint all of these, at which point they'll probably look exactly the same, but that's fine. So these are all dry, or mostly dry, and so next up we're going to do a little bit more painting. So. If we take our grey that we made from earlier 
I'm going to put some of that on here like this and we want to lighten this up. So surprise we add a good amount of white paint there. We want to get a significantly lighter grey, which I'd say that probably is. Once you've got that, you want to get to the point where it isn't completely covered. So this lighter grey, all we're going to do is just paint perpendicular to the surface and it's going to pick up the higher parts of it and miss out the lower ones. So it's going to the more texture you put into this, the more lines you put into it, the more detail you're going to get out of it. So it's quickly going over it, something like that. Same over here. So any recesses are mostly going to get completely missed. So I'm going to do that across all of them. So like I said, the more detail you put in, the, uh, the more you'll get out of this. Still more to do after this, but just showing you a few of them. So back when they're all done. These are basically dry and they've got some highlights on them, but we need to up them a bit more. So using the same brush, which I haven't washed off or anything, I'm going to add some white and we get a very close to white colour to do our next bit of brushing with. That even lighter than that. The same sort of thing, just very quickly going over and you can see how different they look. How many times I do this, I'm always just amazed at how quickly they look so different and how quickly they look. I don't really want to say realistic exactly, but I'm going to say realistic. All that effort to do these lines, and they all get picked up just by this very simple brushing. So I think you see me do enough of that. I think it's pretty obvious what's going to happen with the rest of them. So I'm going to leave you to it whilst I uh, continue to paint these and my hand. Okay, so this is how they're all looking. And now for this final stage, I'm moving away from cheap white paint. I'm actually going to uh, a proper acrylic one rather than whatever that cheap stuff is because. The cheap stuff can be kind of watery and it can spoil things and we do actually want this to be pretty much a actual dry brush. Load it up and then start really getting the excess off. That will probably defy this one, it's got lots of detail on this one. I think I'll never get over quite how much of a difference this makes and so quickly as well for a bigger one. Okay, load this up again and get the excess off. This might be my favourite one, I'm interested to see what model I end up putting on this. Hopefully this can really start picking out more of the detail, I think we need a bit more. From here I've divided these into two lots, so this lot over here uh, have you know, nothing really to be done in terms of putting flock down because there's no base to be seen in particular. I mean I might do something with this one because it's a larger one and these ones have got even the smallest amount of base showing. So what I'm going to do is not complicated at all, I'm going to take my huge thing of PVA, we're going to do lots of craft, I recommend you get one of these because it is so much cheaper. I'll put a link to that one, but it is huge. Who needs five litres of PVA? Me, apparently. So from here, uh, I've got one of our bases here. I've got a brush with a, a decent point on it. I think that's important for this. And I'm going to paint glue on just the top. I'm going to make sure I don't go onto the edge. If I do go onto the edge like that, I'm going to run a finger around like that don't want the edge of the base with paint on it. So that's all I'm gonna do with that. Uh, exactly the same sort of thing here. If you're trying to do this in, in a rush, you can really just slap it on quickly, knowing that you will get it on the base and then just wipe it off and then you can wash your hands after. So even on this where there's hardly any base showing at all, exactly the same thing, just gonna slap some glue on, wipe the excess off and done. Now, once I have done that, I'm going to just take some of this, which is some, I'm not sure what the flock's called because I've cut the top off, I'll try and find out. And from here, you can tip it on, but it can be the case of just putting it into a bag, shaking it off, and you see that the bit that it sticks to and it doesn't stick to the other bit. Crazy, right? Uh, so same with a larger base, nice and simple like that. Uh, now you can as well, and this is what I'm going to be doing with a lot of them, have these self-adhesive tufts which you can pick up pretty cheaply from Amazon or from Timu or places like 
that and these little ones here I think these are great for growing out of rocky crevices so just picking them off you can do this with tweezers as well and sticking them down you can also obviously put them onto the base as well so what one thing you might do is to stick one of these down onto a base like that and then after that you can just pull it to one side a little bit so you're not getting glue on it chuck some glue down and then do exactly the same thing with the flock like that and then maybe add some tufts on the top as well like that why you no stick so that is what i am going to be doing with the rest of them now the ones here that are bigger uh, so this one i'm going to put some flock not a huge amount as if it's kind of gathered at this kind of rocky edge here so for that i'm just going to take a sprinkle of this stuff that and then put some tufts down as well as simple as that so i'm going to do this across the rest of them they should have a nice themey set of bases so this is what they are looking like need to be left to dry but what i like about them is it now it's been said to me before that the most important thing that uh, you have when it comes to your models is their faces and their bases so i'm not particularly good at uh, faces but bases i'm all right at and i think that you can see that with these very nearly finished now that if you have these consistently across a whole bunch of different models that it's just going to look great on to the final stage so the last thing i'm going to do with these bases is just uh, do the edging no not like that um so what i'm going to do is anyone where the, the edge is showing side of this i want to do these brown and what i'm going to do is just so i don't go onto the top if i hold this parallel to the edge it makes it very difficult if not impossible to go up onto the top and you can decide yourself if you want to go around to this underneath bit I'm going to because I will know if I haven't just painting the edges of bases is your final stage so I'll show you these when they are completely finished now I said that the last stage was the final one it wasn't I lied to you um, I'll do my best to never lie to you again uh, there are also washes you can add in if you want to make things even more uh, realistic or better looking. So, got some Agrax Earth Shade here, which is a brownie type wash. So, what I would say is, uh, let's pick on an interesting one. Let's go for this one here. So, with the Agrax Earth Shade, I'm not going to got quite a wet brush here, and I'm just going to put this towards the bottom part of it maybe in a little crevice there that's got a little bit of water on here what you do is just put some water onto that and that allows you to just feather out the color a little now i've got a phonium camera shade which is probably my most used shade because of uh, how much i like the effect it has so this is very much a green one so for this i want to put this anywhere where i feel like more water might have gathered so definitely along here into the any kind of crevice or crack i think it's likely to have some of that going on you can have it on just some rock faces as well again you can just put a bit of water on the brush and just do that but in those shades i think really just add something to the lifelikeness which isn't a word of the rocks so this one here we put a whole bunch on here so if we start with our phonium camera shade a little bit of water Put them all down that crack there, all down there, and then probably on base here too. And then with our Agarax Earth Shade, probably more on the flatter surfaces. I'm not overthinking it, just putting it on just randomly. And then you can, if you like, I've got some Zealot Yellow from Army Speed Painter. Drop that down. Hey, let's have three apparently. And then add some water into that. So we don't want it to be super bright and overpowering but wherever we put some green down just on the edges of that we can add a little yellow maybe up here as well it's not something you want to do overkill on but it's something that you can experiment with these colors there's not really a, a massive danger to it so for this one put the whole line of it there and i think the thing is that by itself it looks too much but if we take some phonium camo shade and put that next to it all of a sudden that rock face starts to look a little bit more realistic, I think. Now we'll take some 
Agrax. Just notice I'm not washing off the brush in between, and that's because I'm happy for the colours to blend and create new shades. So there we go, something like that. So I'm going to do that across the rest of them, and that is the final stage, unless I think of another one. So there we have it, nothing too complicated about it. It takes a little bit of effort, takes a little bit of time, but you get awesome looking bases that you can put your beautifully painted models on, ready for the battlefield. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel as well. And if you have any comments, good or bad, any constructive criticism, then do please let me know. But I'll catch you for another video soon.